This is brought to you by the Centre for Governance, Leadership and Global Responsibility from Leeds Beckett University. And this series of videos uh, is all about the nature of leadership. Uh, the whole point of having several different videos is to try and find what the different approaches are to leadership, to actually begin to develop some kind of dialogue uh, and so begin to learn from each of the different sectors and each of the different styles. You'll see how leadership uh, can be worked out in practice because we'll both be having academics but also key practitioners in their areas. So today we're here with Jonathan uh, Thunderson from Colcon. Uh, we've met a few times, we had opportunity to talk. I invited him to come and uh, welcome and thank you for accepting the invitation. Thank you. Uh, and uh, as you've been uh, following, uh, this is part of the series that we've been running and we'll be carry on running uh, with other uh, leaders. And uh, we're just focusing on what is leadership. And uh, we asked these uh, guests to bring more about their own experience and uh, their own understanding of what is leadership and or governance or, or how leaders can shape the business, society and the world we live in. So Jonathan, I would like to ask you to talk to our audience a little bit about um, your relationship with us and the universe and how it started. Yeah, okay. So, um, so yeah, so our, our relationship started when, when I contacted the university. So I, I always wanted to be able to be in a position where I could come back mm -hmm. and help the university. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so I attended university here from 2003 to 2006. Mm -hmm. I worked for the um, Leeds Beckett job shop. And, um, at that time, Leeds Metropolitan. At the, at, at the time, Leeds Metropolitan yeah. University. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I worked for the, uh, the job shop and okay. um, I, I got my first graduate position from the, from the Leeds Met job shop. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, start, I started off um, in a recruitment role for, uh, for a large um, global IT recruitment company. Okay. Um, I did exceptionally well, and I, I progressed all the way through to uh, to the well as far as I could see it at the top at that stage. That was as far as I could see myself going, mm -hmm. and decided to go into business with uh, with a couple of ex colleagues from that company. Okay. Um, so you left that company to yeah. set up your own company. Yes. But yeah. when did you actually? realize that you should start your own business when did that happen before the university during the university yeah. after it was it was way before okay. way before so um so when i remember when i was um five years old i bumped into my my godfather at, at the at a fair um and i remember my mum telling me that he was going to be very successful he was going to be very wealthy um, and I decided at that stage in life that I wanted to be a, an entrepreneur and I wanted to be successful. So, um, so that was one of my kind of earliest memories. Um, I also I met, I had the privilege of meeting a guy called um, Tim Sanders, who was um, on the board level for Yahoo mm -hmm. um, back in in the in the days where they were where they were very successful. Mm -hmm. um, so I was actually it's whilst I was studying at university and I was um, working as a security guard. And I had the um, I'd been given the responsibility to have the the key for the green room, so um, so I had to open the door and let him go out for a cigarette when he wanted to, and and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember talking to him, and he was saying that he'd only had two hours sleep, and yet he was here to do this presentation. And he stood mm -hmm. up in front of business leaders from all over Yorkshire, so these these people had paid fifteen hundred pounds a seat to to come and see these people talk. Mm -hmm. Um, he'd had two hours sleep and he just went out and delivered it like an absolute pro. Okay. Um, and I just, I remember thinking like this, this, this guy's got something special. And that's when I started looking into leadership a little bit more mm -hmm. and thinking, right, okay, so what does it take to become a leader and be a great... W were you a student at that, that, that yeah. time? Yeah, yeah, so it, it was, here. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I was a student. It was during the, um, during the summer break and um, I was working 14 to 16 hours a day as a, as a security guard. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, not the best job I've ever had, but it certainly ta taught me something about work yeah. ethic. So yeah, um, I think so. Um, anything we do in life, it can help us to move to another stage. Yeah. And if we lay hold of uh, the opportunities and the possibilities that that moment uh, offered to us, and that that's what you did, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. You just kind of yeah. listened to that guy and then yeah. used that in, yeah. in your favour. So, yeah. but tell us a little bit about um, then starting the company, as you were mentioning, with two other guys. What happened after? 
Yeah. So, so I actually started with, with two other people, but then it, in the end, there, there ended up being four of us. Um, so we made it, we made it through the, the first two years. It was, it was extremely hard, far harder than we ever predicted. Mm -hmm. So um, we didn't get, even get close to our original business plan that we set out to do. But we, uh, the, the main thing that I'm proud of is that we, we made it through. We survived those first couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember when, when I started, I was asking people, oh, when are you next going to be looking to recruit? And they were telling me they'd just laid off 40% of their workforce. Okay. Like, are you, you crazy, Jonathan? Like, no one's recruiting at the moment. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, yeah, so it was very, very difficult times. But so we, we when made you it started, through. how soon after it was the crisis you mentioned about the 2008? So was uh, that a year or? The, the, the company that I'd left, I was literally, I was on gardening leave. So mm -hmm. I sat at home eating my cornflakes on mm -hmm. the sofa, hearing about this credit crunch and thinking, this doesn't look good. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so it was literally as I started the business. And the, the first phone calls I was making, people were telling me the news. They were saying 40%, you know, 2,500 people just made redundant. Um, so on the plus side, it was a great time to start a database. So as a result of this, we've got a fantastic candidate database because mm -hmm. there's never been more people looking in the world of IT. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, yeah. So but during yeah. those days, probably were the time where you're also your leadership were being forged and yeah. decision making, which is part of um, the everyday life of a leader. You have to decide yeah. and make decisions that will affect thousands, hundreds of thousands of millions of people. So yeah. you had to make a decision, do I carry on, do I stop, yeah. what do I do, you yeah. know, in, 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 in sight of this crisis going on that you didn't know the extension of that point. Yeah. So, but the, you also mentioned that you were left by your, I mean, your partners left and then you, yeah. you had to make a decision about yourself with the company. Yeah, so the, the, the partnership didn't go according to plan. Mm -hmm. um, so the, there, was, um, there was a discrepancy between the, between the partners, two of the partners left and ultimately I ended up um, having to, to take on the, the responsibility of the company. Um, I had to buy out the other, the other partners. Um, there was some misinformation about how big the tax bill was going to be. So, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it was a very difficult time. We, we'd actually just taken on a placement student from Leeds Met. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd taken on a, a student um, for 12 months. So I had to pay for the, her wage over, the, over that year. Um, I had to ensure that my bills were paid for, the company bills were paid for, and I'd just, mm -hmm. been, in, just been told that we had this monster of a bill that was, uh, that was on its way, and we had nine months in which to pay it. So, um, so I just had to keep on going. Um, I don't think there was ever a chance in my mind that I was going to quit. The only way I was going to qu quit is if I got broken. So I, mm -hmm. I would have always just carried on fighting and fighting and fighting mm -hmm. regardless of, of what happened. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, th those were some very, very dark days. Mm -hmm. Very, very hard days. Do, do you think that, that those days were also helpful to where you are today, to the leader you are today or, or, yeah. or how? Yeah, I mean, how the company developed. Yeah, I, well, I believe that everything you do makes you the person you are today. Mm -hmm. So I believe in no regrets. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, so we, we I believe that you have to just keep on going. You have to continue doing what you you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, certainly it built a level of resilient re resilience mm -hmm. in me that mm -hmm. um, that yeah. that had uh, you know that has stood me well so okay. far. Okay, with that in mind, what is leadership for you? Um, so leadership is instilling the, the values, the, um, the vision and the mission um, and in, ensuring that everybody in the company understands them and believes in them. Mm -hmm. So you need everyone within the organisation to know exactly what they are and what it means to them. Um, so if you can get people to believe those then that's that's the mm -hmm. difference between kind of leadership and management. Yeah. Um, so management is getting people to do their day-to-day -day job, just to getting them to do what they need to do to perform the role. Whereas lead, great leadership, in my opinion, is being able to get people to believe in your vision. Mm -hmm. and that's that is the the biggest part of it. Obviously, the the values and the mission are important, but the the vision is the is the biggest thing. And if you if you get people to believe in your vision, that's where you start to get people to do the mm -hmm. impossible. So, um, so that is Alex Ferguson who references in, in his book um, something about the difference between managers and leaders are, uh, are people who, um, so a manager gets someone to do the possible, a, a leader gets people to do mm. the impossible. Yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting you mentioning that because I was uh, going to ask you about the difference between 
management and leadership. We debate ar ar around that many times, and we hear people talking about that. That um, you know, uh, manager. Not all managers are leaders. Yeah. You know, and leaders normally they need to know how to manage people. It's all about people in the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. But it's very interesting about that. But how, how would you define successful leadership? What is it being successful as a leader means to you? Yeah. And could you yeah. cite any yeah. example of people that have successful leaders that inspired you also? Yeah. Um, so it, it is about getting people to follow that vision and for people to understand exactly what it is that you're looking to achieve and getting them mm -hmm. to believe that that is possible. So you, you need people to be following you regardless of what happens um, and everything else comes off that. All the communication and all the, um, all the way down the company, all the communication needs to come from the leader. Um, so I, uh, I, um, I completed a course a while ago um, through the Goldman Sachs program and um, they asked the question, who's responsible for marketing within your, within your company? It's obviously a, a relevant topic for, for you, but mm -hmm. um, they said that the, the marketing comes from the person at the top. So whoever the, whoever the person is needs to ensure that the communication mm -hmm. filters down um, through to those people. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of great leaders, I mean, the, the, there are so many. Like I said, my godfather's always been a, an inspiration for me. Um, but then certainly um, Alan Sugar's kind of work ethic. Um, so he's, he's clearly just worked hard all of his life and grafted and got to where he is today. Um, in terms of a marketing perspective, Richard Branson's obviously achieved great things. I know they're mm -hmm. kind of cliche leaders, um, but uh, Tim Sanders again. So meeting him for the for the mm -hmm. first time, well, the the only time, but meeting him was a was a great experience as well. On that on that same level, should leaders be rewarded like gratifications or bonus? What do you what do you think about that? Yeah, I I believe that um, that all high performing organisations people aren't treated equally. Those people that achieve a lot, receive a lot. So they're the people that, that make it to the top. They're the people who, um, so they get rewarded through promotions, but certainly in terms of bonuses and those kind of things, I believe mm -hmm. that leaders should be rewarded exactly the same as all other people should be within the business. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's just about the um, the performance in terms of sales. There has to be lots of layers of, of kind of KPIs. So there has to be, they have to be rewarded for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly don't believe that leaders should be rewarded for negative or unethical behavior. Um, but I do believe that leaders should be rewarded for the jobs that they do. The better they do, the more they should be rewarded. Okay, that's interesting. The question is uh, now, we're living, uh, we're going through serious moment of transition changes within leadership. We're seeing so many scandals, so many companies um, um, going bust, and then people coming, the media um, reporting on, on, on different leaders across the world, you know, yeah. and we, we all like face. Um, this question, can we trust leadership? Or, and uh, in your own situation, how do you handle crisis within your own company, a crisis and leadership? And if you could give an example. Yeah. I mean, first question is, can we trust leaders, leadership still as a whole? Yeah. Well, we, ha we have to, don't we? So if we, mm -hmm. if we, can't, if we can't trust leaders, then who, who can we trust? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's always important to kind of question why you're being led into a certain situation. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, leaders will naturally inspire people to follow anyway. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be a case of whether they they trusted or not, because they will just naturally follow those people. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of crisis situations, I've I've certainly had quite a lot in my uh, in my time. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember in the in the very early days when I'd taken over as sole director, um, I had a potential mutiny on my hands, and um, there was uh, there was a, a chance that. Um, well, it, it felt it felt very uncomfortable for me. My senior team were um, asking me for a, a chat outside, and they, you know, they weren't happy with certain things that were going on, and it was because of uh, lack of communication from my part. So I believe that that is one of the, the key things to ensure that in a crisis situation, the communication is key. So the message needs to be delivered correctly. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that one of the other key things is that you remain calm as well, because if you panic, then everyone else will panic. Mm. So there needs to be just this absolute air of calm about you within a crisis situation. Mm -hmm. um, and no matter how bad a crisis is, there's always something worse in the world. So mm. you, you can't get you can't get too upset. Um, 
so, so yeah, thank so you. I think that calmness and communication are key within a crisis situation. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for, for spending some time with us today. I have a last question for you, which we, we normally ask to all of the um, um, guests here in the series. I would like to ask you to leave a message to our students. We, we, we have students within the center, or, or we have PhD students, we have MBA students, postgrad, undergrad, but quite a lot of these students are, see themselves as leaders, or they are developing some sort of leadership skills, and they will be probably running their businesses or running organizations and companies, and um, private sector or third sector, whatever it is, they'll be in positions of leadership. What would be the message that you'd like to leave to these, our students? I guess just to get involved as much as you can with situations that require leadership. So looking at societies, looking at um, things within the university that will naturally provide you with leadership skills. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly my time when I was here at university, I joined something called the Officer Training Corps, um, which so it's you know, it's an army-based uh, society, I guess. Um, but they they treat you they they teach you a great deal about leadership. One of the one of the biggest examples of leadership is would they follow you into the trenches and literally army leaders have to do that on a daily basis mm -hmm. um, so the other thing that i'd recommend is go out into the business world and network go to networking events um, we, we run networking events that students could come along mm -hmm. to by by all means um, but get out there and try and do as much as you possibly can to um, to receive leadership um, advice experience and actually see it in action mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's excellent. I mean, we, we appreciate also your time and uh, I know you are involved with us in a number of initiatives. I mean, you, you're also involved with the, some of our societies, right? Yes, that we, we do. yeah, yeah. So, yeah we, we sponsor um, the Leeds Beckett Computer Society. Yeah, there you go, thank um, you. Um, yeah. I think it's really good if, uh, guys, you have the time, get involved with extra uh, activities, yeah. you know. Uh, or either by working or, or going to events or networking events, that's exactly what you say. It, it helps you to build that, um, build the skills, build the, the, the confidence to yeah. become the leader uh, that they need to become to for the future career development and, and, and for the marketplace, whatever they're going to be performing. And uh, I really appreciate your time and it's really interesting to listen to you and I uh, also would like to thank you for the partnership, for being with us here and doing some of the work they've been doing with the universe. Thank you very much for today. No problem. Cheers. Thank you.